Hi guys. It is another storming evening here. The collapse of global industrial civilization here. As the sun begins to set on spring 2020, that would make it Friday, June 19th, 2020 here on uh, at Bugs in a Jar Farm where I did confirm today that the little house here that I bought has been under four feet of water at least five times. So I'm wondering what to do with this information. So while I think about that here at the end of this long, strange day, do what I try to do every Friday, better late than never, and that is go over here to mongabay.com where we're going to check in with Rhett Butler and boys and girls at mongabay.com. Oh yes, uh, this is Collapse Chronicles. I am Sam Mitchell. This is my little co-pilot Sancho Panza here for today's, this week's ecological meltdown roundup. So we're going to start with salamanders. I've noticed I have these cool things getting squashed in the row. These little red elves. Elves, I think they're called. These little newts walking around. And I'm hoping they're not spreading the new pandemic around. And we are, of course, talking about what could be truly a catastrophic pandemic and not a bad hair day. And that is we're all waiting for the great salamander pandemic pandemic to hit and uh, it's going to be a mess when it gets here as the US is home to the world's greatest diversity of salamanders we are I have found several varieties of salamanders here at the farm in Ithaca New York so experts are worried about another pandemic Headed for the country. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> so far, they have, they have tested 11,000 salamanders. Not one positive test, but it's only a matter of time. So anyway, uh, from salamanders in Ithaca, New York, to the bottom of the ocean... I love it when they ask a question in Manga Bay, particularly when the question is about deep sea mining. I've had several videos on deep sea mining, <clears throat> quite possibly next to the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative, or maybe, or maybe the assault on the Amazon rainforest, deep sea mining. Uh, by all accounts, it's going to be the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative at the bottom of the ocean. It is going to be just an unbridled assault on this planet. Uh, for Rhett Butler to even suggest ironically or rhetorically deep sea mining an environmental solution or an impending catastrophe. Yes, an environmental solution. To call deep sea mining a, an environmental solution is to call Sancho Panza, I don't know, a uh, maybe a bull mastiff. Yes, a new report by the Deep Sea Mining Campaign in Mining Watch Canada have <clears throat> examines the potential risk of seabed mining operations for targeting polymetallic nodules, other, uh, otherwise known as rocks, that harbor minerals like manganese, nickel, cobalt, and copper. While Deep sea mining has not yet started. 16 international mining companies now have contracts to 
explore the seabed for minerals in the eastern Pacific and other companies have contracts to explore in the Indian Ocean and western Pacific. The report suggests, would you shut up? The report suggests that, come on, uh, this damn Skype, it, when you get a Skype call, it goes right, uh, I haven't had a Skype call in three days. I sit here to do this rant. I get two of them within two minutes. Okay. You would not believe that the report suggests that deep sea mining would negatively impact ecosystems, biodiversity, fisheries, and the social and economic dimensions of Pacific Island nations. Yes, while mining companies say the mining is less destructive, you know, than the same kind of mining on land. Yes. <clears throat> Mining companies also say, and I would say they say this correctly, that mining is necessary to provide the minerals needed for renewable energy technologies. A major market for uh, this planet-eating uh, destruction at the bottom of the ocean. And I had a long video a couple of months ago uh, I can't remember who was it, the Atlantic or the New Yorker, who uh, really spelled out the absolute destruction uh, of this crap. And where a lot of this stuff is going is into these planet-saving, renewable energy, Green New Deal uh, schemes to save the planet as you might have heard in Planet of the Humans. All right, but moving on from the bottom of the ocean, let's go to the Brazilian Amazon. Or how long has Jair Bozo Nero been in power in Brazil? Could it be 14 months? I don't know. 14 straight months of rising Amazon deforestation in Brazil. <clears throat> deforestation in Earth's largest rainforest increased for the 14th consecutive month according to data released today by Bozo Nero's own government. Deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon is currently pacing 83% ahead of where it was one year ago. And of course, last year it was probably pacing 83% above the year before. Uh, <clears throat> and of course, the high level of deforestation through the first few months of this year means 2020 is shaping up to have a bad fire season. The rise in deforestation troubles scientists who fear that the combination of forest loss and the effects of climate change could trigger the Amazon rainforest to tip toward a drier ecosystem. Then there's already more and more scientists saying the Amazon rainforest has already tipped that it is game over for the Amazon rainforest. Any chance the Amazon rainforest had of surviving went out the window with the election of Jair Bozo Nero. Uh, anybody at this point, including Rhett Butler, pretending that there is any hope for the world's, you know, single most important ecosystem obviously is drowning in hopium at this point. You can kiss the Amazon rainforest. Goodbye. Okay, where are we gonna go next? Uh, chimps 
prefer human crops? Do you think so? Uh, entering agricultural areas to eat crops planted by humans put chimps at risk of injury or death. Yes, but a growing body of evidence suggests that the nutritional benefits, not to mention the taste and the ease of harvesting uh, <clears throat> of cultivated food keeps the apes coming back, you know, coming back to get shot. Yes. Uh, there you go. Say goodbye to the chimps, and I'm skipping over a lot of these. I have an unattended fire going on in the woods, and uh, even though it's a light rain, I need to make sure my little fire is not growing out of control. So uh, let me skip on ahead uh, to some of the main headline. Uh, gee, <clears throat> Indonesia struggles to restore peatlands as fires strangle national parks. More than a million hectares, otherwise known as more than two million acres in Indonesia burned last year, according to the government's own numbers. Those fires released an estimated 708 million tons of CO2 equivalent into the atmosphere costing the country more than five billion dollars in economic losses. Uh, Sumatra was particularly affected last year with fires consuming large swaths of primary rainforest in protected areas which are home to endangered wildlife like Sumatran tigers and elephants. Yes. <clears throat> Illegal logging and the expansion of plantations, otherwise known as oil palm and rubber plantations, in the region uh, over the past decades has rapidly transformed both the park and the surrounding area, draining peat swamps and turning them into degraded, easily flammable patches of land. This was a great story to be reading, uh, leaving a fire unattended in the woods. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> okay. So, of course, the government, uh, President Joko Widodo promised in 2015 he was going to get on top of this. However, uh, these tree huggers acknowledge that restoration progress has not been optimal. Do you think so? The restoration process has not been optimal in Indonesia. Okay, here's a, we were just talking about deep sea mining. Here's just one example, the Cook Islands to grant seabed mining exploration licenses within a year. Okay, the Cook Islands uh, will allow miners to prospect for minerals on its seas seabed with an eye to commencing mining within five years. And of course, we have a corona panic tie-in. Officials justify the decision on the need to ease the country's economic dependence on tourism, which has taken a hit from the corona panic travel restrictions. Yes, yeah, scientists, environmental advocates, uh, and civil society organizations have expressed alarm at the plan 
and warned of potentially disastrous ecosystem impacts that would also hurt local fisheries. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> so apparently, if you if you heard about the Cook Islands making this giant uh, marine protection zone uh, in 2017, well, guess what? They just passed legislation effectively allowing seabed mining permits in this marine protected zone. Oh, yes. Uh, what next? All right, it looks like the locusts are now heading towards Sri Lanka. Good Lord, everywhere you look, uh, they have two kinds of locust. They have both the yellow spotted grasshopper already there, and experts are also watching the harmful desert locust uh, in neighboring India and Pakistan. Though it seems unlikely that these swarms will arrive in the island nation, we shall see. Uh, <clears throat> the decline of natural predators and recent changes in the climate may be helping to increase the frequency of these potentially devastating insect invasions. I like this headline, uh, coral reef loss helps some fish grow bigger, but perhaps not for long. You know, talking about as algae moves in and, and destroys the coral reefs, that a few species of fish that eat algae are having a heyday. But, uh, of course, the, uh, the algae blanket over the corals will be short-lived. And uh, then what are the fish going to eat? Uh, I'm sure there's some other kind of algae they can eat. Okay. How do I scroll down here? My down scroller seems to have, okay, I cannot scroll down on my computer. So we have ended. There is no way to scroll down without highlighting everything. Let's see if we can scroll back up. Jesus. Okay, what is going on with Amazon River Dolphins. What the hell do you think is going on with Amazon River Dolphins? I, I thought they were already extinct. I'm, I'm shocked that there's any left. You know, they're being chopped up for catfish bait. They're being uh, probably chewed up in hydroelectric dams. Uh, the Amazon River Dolphin, also known as the Pink River Dolphin, or the Boto, is the largest of the world's freshwater dolphins. Yes, for years, dolphin populations have been heading down the toilet, having every decade there as poachers hunted the animals using their blubber as bait to catch catfish, which is drawn to the scent of rotting flesh. Don't you just love humans? Uh, so, uh, so Dilma Rousseff in 2015 put a moratorium on the catfish so you couldn't sell the catfish to save the dolphins. Now that moratorium has lapsed and scientists are urging its quick renewal to prevent the Amazon River dolphin from going extinct. But so far, Brazil's Bozo Nero administration has failed to take any steps 
to restore the catfish ban. Yep. Okay, what's going on in Nicaragua? We talked about this last week, uh, talking about uh, the beef industry's links to deforestation and land grabbing in the country's indigenous autonomous regions. And this is part two of, of that sad story. Okay, I don't even want to know what sex organs re sex organs reveal new jumping spider species in the Philippines. I I need to remember what channel I'm on. Uh, we've already been talking about sex organs revealing species of spider, but you will have to find that story elsewhere in the Doomosphere. We don't talk about sex organs and spiders on Collapse Chronicles. Here's a hilarious one. Nature needs cities. Nature needs cities. And cities need nature. I have no idea what hopium Rhett Butler has gotten into Although this is a commentary and the views expressed are those of the author, not necessarily those of Manga Bay. Uh, yes, urbanization is a major cause of habitat loss, which drives much of the staggering loss of biodiversity. Yes. You can see how much nature needs cities. Nature needs cities like, I don't know, baby crippled chipmunks need Sancho Panza to protect them. Nature needs cities. Thank you for that sick, twisted laugh, Brett. Uh, okay, we have the word doomsday showing up. Manga Bay does not want to hear from the Doomers anymore. They're sick and tired of the Doomers. We have been run off of Manga Bay. They don't want any, any, no more doomsaying here on the most doom-filled uh, environmental newsletter. Effective conservation scientist must shift away from doomsday views and towards solutions. Yes, too much of conservation research focuses on describing the state of nature, in particular declines in biodiversity, and not on developing sustainable solutions to these conservation challenges. These studies that, quote, ring the alarm bell tend to dominate because of the challenges of doing the kind of complex multiple disciplinary research needed to develop workable solutions. Yes. Right here we have three cases, three cases that they highlight of success stories. So all you doomers can listen to this. We have South Asian vultures, whooping cranes, and seabird bycatch. So there you go. If, if we can bring back South Asian vultures from extinction, there's no way uh, why we shouldn't be able to stop the death of the Amazon rainforest, the death of the Great Barrier Reef, the melting of the Arctic, the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative, deep sea mining, palm oil. Yes, those doomers, those doomy, doomy doomers. Yes. Gee, take a uh, wild guess 
experts see environmental and social fallout in Indonesia's new infrastructure push. The Indonesian government has announced a list of 89 priority projects tagged at $100 billion to jumpstart the economy out of the current corona panic induced economic slump. Yes, to speed up the projects from the economic uh, slump caused by the government issuing all of these BS economic lockdowns, to speed up the projects, the government has issued a new regulation on eminent domain that will make it easier to take over community lands, including those of indigenous groups, and to allow forest to be cleared. Yes, uh, the newest regulation is the latest in a slate of deregulatory policies that conservationists, environmental activists, and indigenous rights defenders say will harm the country's biodiversity, its climate commitments, and its most vulnerable communities. Yes. Among the projects now slated for high-speed permitting are nickel smelters that are applying to dump their toxic waste into the ocean, a high-speed railway line that is part of the China-backed Belt and Road Initiative, and a rice estate spanning 2.2 million acres of endangered peatlands. There you go. You will not believe that a Vietnamese agribusiness firm has been accused of clearing indigenous land in Cambodia. Yes. Do you think so? Imagine that. Uh, here's one. Is his knee, This is a big a knee slapper as nature needs cities. Here we go again with rats dipping into the hopium pipe. Colombian farmers and ranchers join businesses to turn the tide on Amazon deforestation. There you go. Cattle ranchers in Colombia's Amazon are joining forces with businesses and research institutions to tackle deforestation in the region. Yes, deforestation in Col Colombia's Amazon in 2018 was nearly the size of Luxembourg. But the cattle ranchers are claiming a zero deforestation commitment. Oh, uh, yes. Huh. Imagine this. This is probably part of jump starting the Indonesian economy. Also, Indonesia to allow back destructive sane and trawl nets in its waters. The Indonesian government plans to lift its ban on the use of seine and trawl nets, which marine conservationists and scientists have blamed for overfishing and damage to coastal reef ecosystems. Yes, the fisheries ministry says the move is expected to boost catches and thereby attract greater investment in Indonesia's fishery sector. Do you think so? <clears throat> conservationists have panned the proposed lifting of the band, calling it a step backwards. Do you think so? Here is a Sri Lankan rescue center racing to save wild patients during corona panic lockdown. 
Yes. Uh, <clears throat> initiated in 2008, the Wildlife Rehabilitation Center has saved and released many animals, but now faces funding uncertainty as a result of the economic impact of the lockdown. And uh, of course, uh, we uh, have people eating the animals that we don't need to get to talk, uh, need to talk about that as long as we're talking about the corona panic. Wow, the one-two punch of drought and corona panic hits Madagascar's poor and its wildlife. The cause of the fallout from the corona panic economic lockdowns, poverty is rising in Madagascar, already one of the poorest countries in the world. Yes, uh, and of course, you know, they're talking about no tourist uh, <clears throat> and a drought. Uh, the hunger crisis uh, compounded by the corona panic could force people to lean even more heavily on nature, to impinge on forest, and to consume more wild animals to survive. Yes, do you think so? Here in the Philippines, we have the latest assault by police on environmental officers. Uh, environmental activist uh, lives matter. Yes. Uh, this is over the mangroves. Some guy fighting to protect the mangroves yes, has been assaulted and arrested. Uh, cutting down mangroves is prohibited under Philippine laws and in recent years environmental <coughs> defenders have come under deadly attacks from suspected l illegal loggers, but this incident marks the first time you know that this is ha th that they've been assaulted by the police. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> Gee, Amazon poor go hungry as Brazil slashes social safety net and cuts forest. Yes. A combination of interacting factors is now causing many poor families in riverine communities to go hungry. Yes, uh, and so even the Indians trying to find bush meat down there, they can't find any bush meat even because all of their land has been turned into, uh, into plantations and all the usual stuff. Good Lord. Uh, anyway, guys, all of this talk about uh, Amazon wildfires and peat fires, they didn't even mention the wildfires in, uh, in Siberia raging out of control, some big wildfire in Arizona raging out of control. And uh, I need to get out of here and make sure the fire and, and uh, bugs in a jar farm is not raging out of control. So anyway, I'm going to wrap this up because I understand I am talking to myself. So uh, come see me at bugs in a jar farm before my little house is four feet underwater. Can you swim? Can you swim? There's four feet of water coming down the creek. Bye, guys.